Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Today we keep the memorial of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, a feast which marks the time when, according to tradition, Saint Simon Stock, who was a member of the Carmelite Order, and visiting on pilgrimage, uh, Mount Carmel uh, in Israel, uh, where Elijah, of course, slew the prophets of Baal. And there's been a great tradition of devotion to God and also uh, to Mary. Simon Stock uh, saw a vision of Our Lady holding our Lord, the infant child in one hand, and holding out in the other the um, scapula, that piece of cloth which is connected by two uh, cords, uh, a piece of cloth, cloth to put on front and back, over the head and on the front and on the back. It's a symbol of, in a way, the habit and, as it were, putting on Christ, putting on the protection that he brings us from heaven, but also, of course, of dedication to him and to a life of poverty and love and service for the Lord that that represents. And so the scapula has become uh, a great sign and symbol, also a, a sacramental uh, right through to our present times, endowed with many blessings and graces. And Mary promises there's the Sabbatine privilege that those who wear this with faithfulness uh, until death uh, will uh, you know, uh, be received into heaven. It's a wonderful uh, blessing bestowed on the scapula and those who wear it with devotion. Of course, we must uh, not just use it, but rather make it a source of our devotion to the Lord. The Mass today is offered for um, Father Peter Sharp, who celebrated uh, his uh, golden anniversary just recently. So we, we wish all the very best to Father Peter at this time and pray that he may have many more years and we pray for all our priests at this time and of course all those in the Carmelite order. Brothers and sisters let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you my brothers and sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. May the venerable intercession of the glorious Virgin Mary come to our aid, we pray, O Lord, so that fortified by her protection, we may reach the mountain which is Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Zechariah. 
Sing, rejoice, daughter of Zion, for I am coming to dwell in the middle of you. It is the Lord who speaks. Many nations will join the Lord. On that day they will become his people. But he will remain among you, and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. But the Lord will hold Judah as his portion in the Holy Land, and again make Jerusalem his very own. Let all mankind be silent before the Lord, for he is awaking and is coming from his holy dwelling. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. He looks on his servant in her nothingness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy is his name. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Happy are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was speaking to the crowds when his mother and brothers appeared. They were standing outside and were anxious to have a word with him. But to the man who told him this, Jesus replied, Who is my mother? Who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand towards his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Anyone who does the will of my Father in heaven, he is my brother and sister and mother. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. There is a tradition regarding Mount Carmel and Our Lady that goes back to the time of the first book of the Kings, chapter 18 there, where we find Elijah having... Uh, slain the prophets of Baal is on the mountain there praying he's praying now for the drought which had blighted uh, the land and the people for that's, years would now come to an end and his servant who served him was to go down the mountain and see if there was sign of clouds coming and rain to end the drought at each time after he prayed, the servant would go down and see nothing. But after the seventh time of his prayer, the servant went down and saw a small cloud arising from the sea. Different translations translate it either like a man's hand or in the Vulgate and, and, and the Dewey Reims, it comes out as like a man's foot. Now that latter translation has a special significance to it because of course the idea of a foot that would put a holy man steeped in revelation like Elijah in mind of uh, Genesis um, chapter 3 where we hear about how the, uh, the serpent would be accursed because of what he um, introduced into the world when Adam and Eve fell and uh, gave into his temptation and there would be war against the woman and him, her descendants and his descendants and you know uh, she or it or he will crush your head and you will strike its heel. That, that means there's a, a symbolism of the devil's head being crushed. Uh, some translations emphasize it being the Lord himself, others in a way Mary and her, um, you know, the Lord acting through her uh, and 
you know, bringing her to be the uh, mother of the Saviour, bringing that great uh, salvation to bear in the world. But either way, the foot symbolises this crushing of the serpent's head, and that Elijah, being a prophet, uh, had an understanding that it would be through this woman that salvation would come. And this woman, of course, was Mary. So even from the earliest of times, there has been this sense of the importance of the woman. And tradition also has it that from then there were communities of holy people gathering together on the mountain, you know, even before Christ, uh, dedicated to the Lord. And after Christ, uh, that continued, of course, in an explicitly Christian sense, up to the point when uh, Our Lady appeared uh, to St. Simon Stock when he was on pilgrimage to this place and held out the scapid, the sign of the protection of heaven, but also, in a sense, the presence of the Lord in our lives. Because when we put on the scapula, it's like a habit. It's like putting on Christ. Christ is with us, as the first reading tells us, as Zechariah says, that, you know, I am coming to dwell in the middle of you. And the Lord must dwell in the middle of our lives, in the middle of our hearts. And so he will remain among you so we must keep him close to us and the idea of the scapula is to keep christ close to us it's made of wool a symbol of the lamb the lamb of god and so uh, it, there's the wearing of the scapula has to be uh, something truly religious of faithfulness of devotion of prayer and especially devotion to the holy rosary which of course uh, is a very powerful prayer given to another great saint, St. Dominic, uh, as a way of keeping close to the Lord because the rosary really, in a way, is the Bible on beads. And so that's one of the principal ways we can remain close to our lives, uh, cl close in our lives to the Lord in our daily devotion. You'll have noticed a, a, a little different uh, introduction to Mass uh, at the very beginning of the video. That was uh, a traditional hymn, Flos Carmeli, Flower of Carmel, which is a hymn believed to have been written by St. Simon Stock. And the first two verses uh, were there. It, it's quite a bit longer, but the first two verses, of course, this is written in Latin, translated, Tall vine blossom laden, splendor of heaven, child bearing yet maiden, none equals thee, mother so tender, who no man didst know, on Carmel's children thy favours bestow, star of the sea. It is of course a hymn to Mary, the flower of Carmel, who by her flowering of fruitfulness brought the Lord into the world. He was our source of help and strength, protection, and he guides us and leads us to heaven through a life dedicated to him and directed uh, to him and always very close to him. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all this holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of our devotion, and grant that we who celebrate your Son's work of boundless charity may, through the example of the Blessed Virgin Mary, be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbour. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. But truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things, and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these offerings, these holy and un these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis our Pope and Paul our Bishop, and all those who hold him to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for then we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Cosogamus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Please, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he sent the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty, from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gift of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. It was all to, to us also your servants who are sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit as we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
behold, all his sins are spoken of you, O Virgin Mary. For he who is mighty has done great things for you. Sacrament most holy, or sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving in every moment of life, or sacrament most holy, or sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving in every moment of life, or sacrament most holy, or sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving in every moment of life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, always enjoys eternally in glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.